morning, the 15th of October. Beautiful fall day here in northwest New Jersey, a chilly 46 degrees on the outside as I'm recording this morning, but the promise of a beautiful day, and I hope that it's a beautiful day where you are and in your life. Some people ask me from time to time, I think more out of curiosity than anything else, what's the toughest part of preparing a sermon, Jerry? (laughs) After 40 plus years of ministry and 2,000 sermons, I answer them a bit irreverently, getting my behind in my desk chair. (laughs) I have to make the commitment. I've got to get that first step done of sitting down and committing myself to the task. Like so many things in life, the first step is usually the most difficult. There's a moment when we commit ourselves, when we put our minds and hands to the task. And when we do, even as we contemplate all the difficulties and all the impossibilities of that situation in front of us, when we start, we find that wall of impossibility starting to come down. When we tackle the task, we discover the resources we need and the determination and persistence we need to get it done. The book of Joshua tells a story about the people of Israel encamped on the plains east of the Jordan River, ready to enter the promised land. But there's a problem. Before they can go into Canaan, the land God has promised them and given them, they've got to cross the Jordan River. The Bible gives us a little note. It says, and now at the time of the crossing, the Jordan was flowing at flood stage. It was deeper and swifter than it normally was. Joshua, who was proven in his faith, went before the people and told them this. Let me read it to you. Joshua 3. Think of it. The Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Choose 12 men, one from each tribe, and the priests will carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, and when their feet touch the water, the flow of water will be cut off upstream and the river will pile up there in a heap. (laughs) I wonder how many people heard his voice that day and silently wondered inside of themselves, yeah, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Forty years earlier, their parents had faced the same difficulties of possessing the promised land, and when God invited them in, they refused. Their faithlessness caused them to turn into wilderness wanderers, and they died off one by one. And now here the children, the next generation, are facing their own decision of faith. Will they enter? Will they possess the promised land? Joshua presses them to consecrate themselves, to follow the Lord, and to step into the river. And when they did, It did stop flowing. Joshua summarizes the occasion in the fourth chapter of his book. This was so that everyone on the earth would recognize how strong God's rescuing hand is, and you will hold God in solemn reverence always. He said, we've just experienced a faith-building moment, folks. We stepped in, God did what he said, and now we've crossed over. I want you to note something. It may seem obvious, and it may seem that I'm stating something that is so very clear, but the river only stopped flowing when their feet touched the water. They had to take the first step in faith before the miracle happened. There's a powerful life lesson for you and me there. When God says go and it appears there's no way, we have to step into the water. Faith follows the presence of the Lord just as the people of Israel followed the Ark of the Covenant into the Jordan River. Faith commits to the possession of God's promises and obedience opens a way forward from where we are into the wonderful place that he's provided for us. Let me ask you this morning, what insurmountable situation is hindering your spiritual progress? Has God invited you to step up to new ministry? Has God invited you to grow deeper in your faith? Has God invited you to discover himself and his presence in a new way? I don't know. It may be a difficult situation he's invited you to deal with. Whatever it may be, let me ask you this key question. Are you willing to follow him in faith and obedience one step at a time? That first step into the river 
It's going to be the toughest one. But if we are led by God, I'm going to talk about presumptive acts. I'm talking about being led by God. He will make a way. The word from the word is a song for the tested, one that anticipates the fulfillment of the promise of God. And as I read these ancient inspired words, I pray that the Holy Spirit will cause them to become compelling truth for you. They come to us from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. O Israel, the Lord God who created you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I've called you by name. You're mine. When you go through deep water and great trouble, I will be there with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, your Savior. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. What a wonderful promise for us. Friend, <clears throat> take Joshua's word. Consecrate, follow, step into the river. And let's see what God can do with an obedient, humble people who are committed to his promises. What do you say? Father, thank you for the promises that you make us. Promises of eternal life. Promises of salvation. Promises that you will lead us to a life of abundance, that you give us peace with God. I pray today that we will live in your provision. That we will move, Lord, out of our fearfulness and step into the place you have provided for us. Build faith in our hearts, Lord, and give us the courage to respond to your invitation. I pray this all in Jesus' name so that your name will be made great, so that our faith will be strengthened for those challenges that lie, yet lie ahead of us. All this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for giving me the opportunity to share with you for a few moments today. God bless you. Walk with Jesus. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow morning.